Welcome to the second lecture of module 1 in the overview of smart materials. So, our focus today is piezoelectric material. Now, what we have covered in the last lecture very, very briefly, we have talked about a lot about traditional system versus smart system. We have also emphasized that why smart sensors and actuators are important for us. Then we have talked about smart materials for sensing and actuating and we have talked about the direct effect and the converse effect you know in terms of sensors and actuators. If you remember that we have said that direct effects are generally used for sensors and converse effects for the actuators. We have also talked about the smart actuators. Now, today our focus will be the piezoelectric materials which is the most widely used smart material and it has a legacy of its own. So, that is why I first want to talk about the history of piezoelectric material and uh, the piezoelectricity itself, piezoelectric materials, how to prepare a piezoceramic actuator, what is its constitutive relationship, piezoceramic polymers or piezoceramic composites and then how you can device an intelligent system like bimorphs and piezo stacks by using piezoelectric materials. This is what is our goal in this particular lecture. Now, let us talk a little bit about the history of piezoelectricity. So, the when this term piezoelectricity was coined at that time there was this term called pyroelectricity that means it was known that some crystals if you heat it up they generate actually charges and that means electricity can be generated from crystals while heating up that was known. And also it was known from the static electricity that there is something called contact electricity that means if there is a friction that can generate charge. So, when these you know Curie brothers Pierre and Jack Curie in 1880 they found out that pressure can also generate charge the word pressure is called piezo you know Greek is thing. So, they thought that let us give this as a new name in terms of electricity the source of electricity is pressure here. So, it is a piezo electricity. So, that is how the piezo electricity term get coined and who are the people behind this. This 1880 direct piezoelectric effect in which pressure was generating the you know this uh, voltage or the charge in the system. So, that uh, it was actually discovered by Pierre Curie and Jack Curie. They got in fact Nobel Prize in 1903 for this very important discovery. And interestingly Lippmann have gone through the whole thing and he is the first person to develop actually uh, the crystal structure, the analytical relationships and he has theoretically predicted that if pressure can generate charge, then voltage can also generate in this materials deformation. So, that was his prediction and that was experimentally verified as a result he received the Nobel prize in 1908 for the reverse piezoelectric effect in which as you are applying the electric field then you know he is showing that there is a change in the mechanical property that is happening to the system. So, Curie brothers are responsible for piezoelectric say sensor development and Lippmann's analysis responsible for say piezoelectric actuator development. So, that is how the entire field started. However, this all happened long before even the first world war because it was you know uh, in 1880s etcetera we are talking about. It was at that time this piezoelectric effect was only found in certain materials like say zinc blends, like boracites, like turmaline and quartz, cane sugar. See so many materials people tried that what are showing it and Rossell salt. In fact, sugar crystals if you can manage to get a big sugar crystal keep it in a dark room and 
apply a sudden thrust on it by a hammer, you will see the strike of light in it. So, that uh, you know is the uh, point that proves that cane sugar contains this piezoelectric effect. Now, the reverse effect was actually theoretically predicted by Lippmann as I told you and experimentally confirmed by Voigt and that came at a later stage. The application however, first came was in the first world war as usual war uh, you know forces people to develop some uh, cutting edge of technologies. So, in this particular case the sonar transducers were actually developed in which the idea is that if you can have a composite made of steel plate and quartz, then you consider that you have a composite okay, which has a steel plate and a small level of quartz in it. Okay. So, this is a steel plate and then a small quartz you know over it. Now, whenever you are using it a, you know for transducer sonar transducer mostly for submarines. So, as the you know as, as a ship is say passing by okay, it is producing mechanical wave that mechanical force variation that is coming up here on the system that is creating in this particular system a particular variation in terms of uh, voltage in the system. If you look at this that in this composite system as a ship is passing by it is producing actually a mechanical wave which is hitting this quartz part. Now, this quartz part being piezoelectric in nature then uh, as the wave is hitting it will be uh, you know getting expanded and compressed and as it gets uh, expanded and compressed this quartz uh, stream uh, it is going to actually produce uh, what you call a, a voltage in the system. And the because it is uh, with the steel we will later on show that for bimorph kind of systems it actually increases this bending effect and hence this you know bending uh, that is happening uh, you know is con actually helping it to create charge further. So, mechanical bending is actually creating charges in the system and that charge is used uh, as sonar transducer. So, you can actually essentially analyze in a particular you know oscilloscope that with respect to time if you look at the charge in terms of the voltage how this voltage signal is happening and suppose you know if it is a normal wave it will be like this and suddenly if there is a sheep entering then you know this voltage is increasing. So, you know that uh, you know you can uh, that there is the presence of a ship or enemy ships etcetera. So, that is how fast these uh, transducers were actually uh, you know coming into picture and that is the first application of this piezoelectric materials. Now, this kind of applications after you know finding it in terms of uh, Rosell salts and sugar cane sugars and quartz etcetera, people started getting interested that exactly what kind of crystal structure produces this kind of piezoelectric effect. And it was found that a broad group of crystal structures which shows this they are actually perovskite in nature. It is named after a Russian famous geologist who first found out this type of materials. Now, perovskites are actually a ternary ceramic which has three component structure and we normally call it as A B O 3. So, the first two components are for example, uh, two metals like say or barium and titanium. So, uh, it can be metallic oxides along with uh, uh, metal non metals and uh, or two metals, but it has to have these two elements of oxides. So, there are A B's and along with that you have the oxygen there. Now, how they are arranged that is also very interesting. They are generally arranged in a tetragonal structure as you can see here that the bariums are all sitting at each one of these corners of the tetragon and oxygen is there at the face centers and titanium is at the very root of the whole thing. Now, this crystal structure is arranged in such a manner 
that they, they are inherently balanced. So, that inherently there is no charge in it as long as they can maintain this tetragonal symmetry. So, for example, if you look at barium, it has two plus charges, but also each barium is actually shared among eight such you know crystal structure surrounding. So, it becomes one eighth of it. So, essentially you will see that considering the barium and titanium together you are getting 6 plus. Okay. On the other hand if you look at oxygens they are actually shared with another okay, such system with the adjacent crystal structure. So, they will become half of it. So, if you consider all these oxygens together like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here. So, that will be equivalent to 6 minus. So, this 6 plus and 6 minus cancels each other. So, that it actually gives you a neutral charge system. However, as long as the symmetry is maintained. Now, let us say I am just deforming this structure. Okay. So, I am applying a mechanical force to this structure. The moment I do that you can very easily see that the titanium at the center with respect to these oxygens they are actually far away in comparison to this oxygens. So, they are closer to some oxygen atoms and they are farther from some other oxygen atoms. So, this immediately disturbs because you know that the coulomb force is inversely proportional to the distance. So, this immediately disturbs the position of the titanium atom. So, they may try to move in one of the directions and the moment they try to move in one of the directions immediately there will be charges that will be happening to the system. So, thus you know this systems actually if you think of it that in reality the in a crystal structure there are hundreds thousands or millions of all these single cells that are arranged. So, at any particular time every cell is having in a some kind of a stress state. So, every cell is not in its pure tetragonal state. So, that means there will be a spontaneous piezoelectricity that will be present in such a system. And this not only happens for this barium titanate AVO 3s, but also for other materials like lead zirconate titanate, lithium niobium, lead niobium, yttrium and manganese based system or NH 4 cadmium based system all these things are later on found out. In fact, the most of the development happened towards the end of the last century. So, as a result we get materials where this effect is more and more pronounced. So, you can use it for real engineering applications. Another interesting thing is that imagine that you have a block of this smart material. Now, it will be having as I told you that millions of these crystals and in each crystal there is a state of stress which is creating uh, you know charges from it which means it has a particular dipole directions positive negative in it inherent. So, each crystal is having its own dipole moments and a dipole vector signifying it and at any particular point they are randomly oriented. As a result the whole system will hardly show any piezoelectric effect, but if you apply a high voltage then these dipoles will actually align themselves towards the voltage. And then if I remove this voltage there will be still remnant polarization which will be happening. This remnant polarization would mean that they will not entirely lose their directions to some extent they will lose, but they, they are still a sense of alignment in them and that would actually make them piezoelectric. So, in order to make this is very crucial a smart sensor or a smart actuator a from piezoelectric material you have to first take the piezoelectric material in its natural state and then you have to apply a high voltage across it. Okay. And we generally electrode it because otherwise how will you apply high voltage. So, we electrode it at the top and bottom and apply the high voltage then this kind of polarization would happen to the system then I will be withdrawing the voltage and then it will be useful as a sensor or actuator because it will be still having this remnant polarization in it. So, that is the way we generally develop piezoelectric you know actuators. Now, there are 
some sign conventions that are related to it. So, as you can see here that the base material here this is piezoelectric and whereas, there is the surface electrodes at the top and the bottom. And also there is a polarization mark which shows that which size is positive you know how it is to be connected between the positive and the negative uh, terminals of a voltage. Now, in the in plane part we have the axis which will be interchangeably we will call it x axis or 1 and y or 2. So, 1 2 or x y are actually in plane direction and out of plane direction is actually z 3 which is also known as the polling axis. So, if you consider this piezoelectric material to be a plate then it is across the plate that is how it is across these plates we are applying the voltage you know to the system. Okay. So, that is what is the polling direction. So, uh, if you look at it that in this particular case if you apply it along the plane uh, along x direction then electric field E 1 uh, then this direction electric field is E 2 and if it is across which is what is generally done is electric field is E 3. So, we have to keep this sign convention in our mind while actually getting the constitutive relationship of the system. Now, what is the constitutive equation of piezoelectricity? Where there this equation is developed in such a beautiful manner that there are always two parts in it. Okay. If I consider only uh, the non smart part for example, in the first equation if you look at it which is on the direct effect and in the direct effect if you remember if you apply stress you are getting charges. Now, you know that charges can also be developed in any dielectric material by applying the electric field itself. So, if I consider the relationship between d and mu e this is for any general material this will happen. Okay. There is no smartness in it. If it is a dielectric material if you apply electric field you will be getting charges. Okay. However, if you are applying mechanical stress and getting charges then this part comes into picture and this is what is due to piezoelectricity. So, that is the additional smartness in the whole system. Okay. So, that is what we have to keep in our mind and this d sigma there is basically two term in it one is the d which is known as electro mechanical you know coupling coefficient sometimes we call it as piezoelectric constant and sigma is nothing but the d times sigma and sigma is nothing but the stress. Okay. But this is in vectorial uh, you know vector notation. So, we will come to the vector notations and these are all you know matrix equations we have to keep it in our mind only in very special cases they will become linear equations. Then this is uh, you know th that is one part of it. Okay. If I look at the converse effect if you see then here epsilon is the strain and strain we know can be generated by stress which is related by the Hooke's law where A c is the compliance and that part there is no smartness in it. But if strain can be produced with the help of the electric field or you know so that means as an actuator. So, that is the part which is piezoelectric in the second equation. So, in the direct effect this part is giving me piezoelectric nature and in the reverse effect it is this part which gives me the you know piezoelectric part uh, into uh, this particular governing equation. Now, if you look at d it uh, here it is d times e. So, again d is the piezoelectric constant and e is the electric field intensity which is generally in terms of voltage per meter or Newton per coulomb. So, the units are important stress unit is Newton per meter square strain in unit less as you know electric displacement is coulomb per meter square compliance is meter square per Newton electric field I told you already permittivity which comes into picture for this particular part permittivity uh, you know farad per meter and piezoelectric constant coulomb per Newton or meter per voltage.
So, and another thing you will be noting that there are some superscripts we have given here. This why these superscripts are there when I will be measuring the charges at that time these permittivity may change by the application of stress. So, that we should not allow. So, that means, you know in, in each of this constitute and in this case also the compliance may change by the presence of the electric field that we should not we have to assume that to be constant. So, in each of the cases the superscript means is that the mechanical property is assumed to be constant against either in this case electric field and in this case against mechanical stress that we have to keep in our mind while applying this particular you know set of equations in the constitutive relationship. Now, direct piezoelectric effect how would it look like? Well, if you consider a block like this and if you are applying voltage you are getting this you know expansion and contraction of the block. If you try to stop that you are going to get actually compressive stress along the polarization direction. So, that is one way that uh, if the this plus minus consideration is giving you a compressive stress. And if you reverse this plus minus to minus plus then that means, you are applying these opposite okay, to the polarization direction then you will be getting tensile stress in the system. This is very important that you have to follow the polarization direction okay, that will be always you know given you with that point as I told you in the last case. And if I give reverse polarization to a large extent in some ceramic materials it may actually crack. So, you know we have to know that which way we have to apply the voltage for certain class of materials. Now, in this particular case uh, the here you know you are uh, applying the compressive stress which is perpendicular to the polarization direction. So, in this case I am applying the mechanical stress and as a result uh, you know we are getting. Uh, so, if, if you are applying this it is going to expand and we are going to get this kind of a voltage generation out of the system. And the opposite thing will happen if I actually apply the tensile force and then the material will get thickened here right it will be shortening. So, you know you will be getting positive and negative voltage similar to this particular condition. So, there is a compression and there is a tension and the corresponding you know sign that we have to keep in our mind in terms of the constitutive relationship. If you look at the converse piezoelectric effect uh, in this case you are applying voltage and how that is. So, in this case you can clearly see that as you are applying positive and negative and this your direction of polarization it is going to expand. Okay. So, voltage of the same polarity as the polling voltage will cause an extension in the system. And if I apply voltage of the opposite polarity as the polling voltage then it will create a compression in the system. So, that sign convention for converse and direct we have to keep in our mind. Now, what is the single most important constant that is important for us? Well, that is known as piezoelectric constant which is d k i d if you look at it. Then in this particular case let us look at it that what exactly it is going to tell us. Well, this is a ratio of charge generated along the kth direction when the mechanical stress is applied in the i direction. So, uh, you know you are getting the charge. Now, the d also can be actually expressed in terms of d c where it is the strain induced in i direction and electric field is applied in the k direction. So, as I told you that you, you are getting the coupling either because you are applying the mechanical stress or because you are uh, you know applying the electric field either of the thing can generate D. So, you can have a D D or a D C and the K i and the I k if input is the mechanical stress then the I is appearing here and if input is the electric field applied uh, then it is appearing here. Okay. So, that we have to keep in our mind. 
So, this is a single most important constant which will tell us that how much of this coupling is happening. The more the coupling, the better is that material as a smart material. The other important thing is that what is the coupling coefficient, because this is uh, electromechanical coupling constant. The coefficient is actually the ratio of the mechanical energy stored in the direction j to the electrical energy applied in direction i, the square root of it or the electrical energy stored in direction j and mechanical energy applied in direction i. So, in either of the ways because you can either convert electrical energy to mechanical energy or you can convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. Either way the k i j tells us that what is the coupling coefficient that is involved in it. Once again the higher is this coupling coefficient the better will be the material in terms of transduction. Let us compare some of the materials towards this direction. So, uh, if you consider barium titanate look at its k 3 1 that is 0 0.21 and if you consider piezoelectric highest is 0 0.39. So, about you know if the entire uh, energy could have been converted it would have been close to 1, but here it is about close to 39 percent conversion. There are some materials which will have very low conversions like lithium, niobium or lead titanate, but they have other suitabilities in comparison to this. Another interesting thing to look at it is that almost everywhere the 3 3 properties are actually higher if you look at it in comparison to the 3 1 properties, which means that most of these crystals are in such a manner the crystal you know structure is that if I apply the voltage along the three direction I get maximum deformation along the same direction and the same thing is true for voltage generation also. So, the 3 3 effect is that is very useful you know in terms of the design of the system we have to keep this particular property in our mind. Another two observation is that piezoelectric family has the highest piezoelectric coupling and Curie point wise uh, the PZT family temperature that Curie point is important that the temperature beyond which you will not get the piezoelectric effect. Okay. So, the uh, you know orientation of the polarization that will be lost. So, that is about 220 to 315 for PZT family whereas, for lithium family it is 600 to 1200 degree centigrade. So, as a result even if the lithium family shows lower piezoelectric coupling coefficients etcetera, but they are much better uh, in the high temperature piezoelectric effect. So, that is a point and another important point is that if you can generate some very specific single crystal like PMNs then you would get a K 3 3 which can be as high as 0 0.92 and a D 3 3 which is about 2070 phenomenal, but the single crystals are generally very brittle in nature and they are only developed in laboratory based situations. So, they are still not commercial so far. Can piezoelectricity be only observed in ABO 3 uh, ceramics? They are also obser observed in polymers. This is something that was discovered in Japan that there is some PVDFs polyphenyl in fluoride uh, in, a, in its particularly in all trans state where all the you know poles are dipoles are actually in one direction uh, they have observed that this particular uh, case you get a good amount of piezoelectricity in the system in the polymeric chain. Although it is only about 19 pico coulomb per newton, but in comparison to PZT which is 234 pico coulomb per newton, but the good part is that these materials are more flexible. So, the other materials are actually ceramics are not flexible. So, you cannot give any arbitrary shape to them, but this materials you can give arbitrary shapes. So, they are more useful wherever you know you are applying them as a layer on a say for example, on a carved surface etcetera. So, there the polymers are very very useful. How do we prepare a piezo ceramic actuator? Well, you have to first start with fine powders of any of these uh, families of piezoelectric material and this fine powder you have to mix uh, them say for example, lead oxide and zirconia and titanium oxide you have to mix them in a fixed proportion and you use an organic binder to actually bind the ceramic powders form them in a specific shape. 
heat it for a specific time and temperature at a high temperature, apply pressure along with then you know these organic binders will be evaporated and it will retain that form. You cool it, you apply the electrode by sputtering and you polarize it with a high voltage, high DC voltage, you have the sensor and the actuator ready with you. That is the way we generally produce such a system. So, these there are many steps like the powder preparations you can take so many different types of steps, this is just for your information. Shape forming you can take so many different types of steps or high temperature you can take you know pressure less hot press or hot isostatic press condition and finishing you know you can give different types of finishing mechanical finishing, laser finishing, water jet finishing using ultra sonics etcetera. So, each one of these blocks can be achieved in various ways or a combination of these ways. Okay. So, it is a field which is a very, very well developed you know uh, technology. Now, the can we make a composite out of this piezoelectric system? Well, if you mix a polymer and piezoelectric, you can get a composite out of it. Okay. Why should we be making composite? Because I told you that piezoelectrics are ceramics are generally brittle in nature. So, if you mix them in a polymer, you actually get some compliance to it, so that you can shape it for various applications. So, you first take small PZT particles and you put them in matrix like PU matrix. Okay. Sometimes you also put larger particles in silicon rubbers and then you can actually make a composite out of it. This is a particular paper that you can see where you know they have shown various techniques of uh, different techniques of making piezoelectric composites. We can apply this piezoelectric composite in one good way if you remember in the last lecture we have shown that in a printer how it was used for bending control. So, that is what we call as a bimorph that means there will be two layers in it. Okay. So, uh, if you look at it each one of them say if it is a D 3 1 actuator I already told you that for a D 3 1 you are applying forces or voltage along the horizontal you know plane direction and you are getting the voltage uh, in the vertical direction. So, if it is an actuator you are doing the other way around that means you are applying voltage across it and you are getting deformation or force out of the system. So, if I reverse the voltage I am getting the other way you know force and the deflection in the system. Now, if you imagine that I actually add these two layers together and I give the common voltage and that this point then that means when one will be expanding the other will be contracting. So, you can see it in the particular video that how this particular thing is going to behave. So, you can see that there are two of them okay, and you are getting a bending in the whole system. So, that is what you know a bimorph would actually behave like. Okay. So, this is you know when we are making uh, a D 3 1 actuators and similarly you you know when you are deforming it you can get a D 3 1 sensors out of it. So, D 3 1 basically tell us is that you are doing something in one plane and you are getting the effect in the other plane. So, that is D 3 1 system. If I do it everything in one direction only for example, I am applying the voltage in the z direction and I am getting the deformation in the z direction itself then it is a D 3 3 actuator and similarly I am applying force in the z direction and I am getting voltage in the z direction then it is a D 3 3 sensors. These are also known as stack actuators that is the common name stack actuator or stack sensors. So, that is what are the different types of systems that you can build up by using this simple you know system of piezoelectricity. And one important thing here is that there is an operating point involved. Suppose you do not apply any force on a piezoelectric material, then you are only going to get deflections out of it. Suppose you stop it to deform totally, then you are going to get only force out of it. But in reality, we actually we will be always somewhere in the middle. That means, we will get some force out of the system and some deflection will be happening to it. So, that is where from application to application you have to decide where this operating point will be, okay, how much of force and how much of deflection you are you know uh, getting from the system. So, this is brief about the piezoelectric materials. 
In the next lecture, we will talk about the magnetostrictive material, its constitutive equations and different effects of magnetostriction. Thank you. Thank you.